It's time for Supply Chain Now Radio, broadcasting live from the supply chain capital of the country, Atlanta, Georgia. Supply Chain Now Radio spotlights the best in all things supply chain, the people, the technologies, the best practices, and the critical issues of the day. And now, here are your hosts. All right. Good afternoon. Scott Luton here with you live on Supply Chain Now. Welcome back to the show. We are not broadcasting live from Atlanta, GA. We're here in beautiful Scottsdale, Arizona. I wish you could see out to my left uh, the 73 degrees, hardly a a cloud in the sky, gorgeous weather out here. And what brings us out here? Well, it's the DEMSCA Annual Conference, Supplier Development, Supplier Diversity, Supplier Success. It's held every year. Uh, And if DEMSCA is new to you, you got to check it out. Uh, uh, Diverse Manufacturing Supply Chain Alliance, DMSCA. And uh, it's new. To, it's my first event out here, uh, but it's got to be on your radar. You can learn more about the organization at dmsca.us. All right, two quick programming notes before we bring in our featured guest here. Number one, simple. You can find our podcast wherever you get your podcast from, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, you name it. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single thing. And then secondly, we got to thank the sponsor that allows us to be out here covering this awesome conference, and that's Verison. Verison is powering AI, data, uh, AI-driven data harmonization across the globe with a big focus on materials. You can learn more at verison.com, V-E-R-U-S-E-N.com. All right, so in, as we start to wrap up our coverage here of the Demska Conference, we've got our cleanup hitter, Kevin L. Jackson, <laughs> founder and CEO, GC Global Net. Kevin, how you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you very much, guys, for having me here. I know it's the last event of the day. Like I said, you're a cleanup hitter, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but we had a chance to connect with Kevin on LinkedIn and social media prior to being here, and then you and I had a quick chance to kind of catch up um, after passing by each other probably three times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I had a sneak peek of, of the cool things that he's up to and, and, and some of the special partnering that he's doing with Demska. And we'll get it to that in just a second. But uh, for starters, Kevin, please you know, uh, tell our audience, who is Kevin L. Jackson? And, and give us uh, an a- anecdote or two about your upbringing. Oh, yeah, sure. Well, um, first of all, I guess years ago I was in the Navy. I was a carrier pilot. Mm. I flew... Uh, Hawkeyes, E2Cs, and uh, C2As. Um, actually worked in the Navy Space Technology Program okay. and uh, worked with the um, shuttle. Um, actually, if you ever heard of the New Horizons spacecraft, the one yeah. that went to Pluto, yeah. well, that was the first spacecraft I actually processed. Kevin, uh, you're a- well above my pay grade. <laughs> that is some big big stuff. Yeah. Um, and, and, and so New Horizons, I think that's already... Yeah, it went past. Orbited, yeah, yeah right. it went past Pluto. The big picture of the heart. Mm. You know what's really interesting about it is that um, we processed the payload, we packed it up, put it on the Atlas rocket, and we had to cross our fingers for ten years mm. because it took ten years to get to Pluto. And it was like, we hope it works. We hope it works. And when it did, I bet there was some celebration. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So, mm-hmm. um, but it, it was a great highlight, I think, of my mm-hmm. life. So let me go back. As, as fascinated, I'm a big space nerd. <laughs> big space nerd. And I grew up in the 80s when the uh, the shuttle program was, was wheeled in on TVs and we'd yeah. watch all the launches. <laughs> and, you know, I miss that. And I think uh, our kids miss yes, that. Yes, you know, all do. for the what the private sector is doing, but... Um, hoping that NASA will take a um, will be afforded that front and center opportunity again to inspire people, right? Yeah. Um, but going back to your um, your naval experience, yeah. So not only did you fly aircraft, and I think if I recognize some of those aircraft uh, anti submarine warfare, it was uh, command and control. Okay. Yeah, command right. and control, and uh, I flew a lot of aircraft, but yeah, command and control is my real. Core. Okay. <laughs> and also, you were telling me, just before we went live, you also did some of the flagging, which oh. helps land aircraft. Is that yeah, right? I was a landing signal officer. People call it paddle. So mm. I stand at the end of the aircraft carrier and while other planes come down, you know, I tell you, you're too low, you're too high, you're left, you're right. Wave <laughs> off, wave off. <laughs> <laughs> That's got to be, so between flying uh-huh. Which I can only imagine how challenging that is with a, a deck that's constantly moving right. and, and pitching and rolling, but then to help other 
pilots that are probably yeah. white knuckled coming in <laughs> and, and kind of being their um, their guide. Yeah, it's got that's fascinating. You never, well, what's really white knuckles is when you're an instructor and a student is landing for the first time oh, and you're gosh. sitting in there in the, in the cockpit. So you know it. What an experience. It's an experience. Yeah. Oh. Right. What, what, um, one last question. I promise to move on. I, I find this kind of stuff really intriguing, though. What carrier? Did, was it one? Was it several? Oh, no, several. I've been on about 13 carriers. Mm. My last one was the uh, Teddy Roosevelt, but my uh, oldest carrier was the USS Midway CV-43. Mm. Mm. Um, and that was like a World War II carrier. Sure. So I've been on Coral Sea, um, the Enterprise, Call Vincent Nimitz. Really? Yeah, I've been in a lot of different carriers. Man, awesome. All right, so I guess we're going to have to move on. We've got to work now. <laughs> That's right. All right, so um, we've kind of tackled a portion of this next question. I, I really want to get a sense uh, for our audience, your professional mm-hmm. journey. Okay. Clearly, I can only imagine that all the experiences and leadership experiences and, and as well as technical proficiencies that you yeah. picked up throughout your time in the Navy. But kind of as you moved into the private sector or, or whatever came next following yeah. your military, tell us about that kind of leading up to your current role. So uh, actually when I was uh, working with the New Horizon, that was a chief technology officer with Centel Corporation. And I started working with J.P. Morgan Chase where mm. I was a global uh, vice president for IT projects, mm. IBM um, and at IBM is kind of when things uh, started gelling for me. I was the worldwide sales executive for mobile wireless and voice technology. And that was the time when the Internet started to become a thing. And mm. at IBM, I was focused on helping companies uh, develop business models that leveraged e-commerce. Wow. Uh, in in web sphere, as if you didn't have enough complexity in the navy, <laughs> you decided to double down in the private sector. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's incredible. So that when we were using service oriented architecture, wireless um, devices, and you know uh, global networks, mm. and all that came together to cloud computing. And I started working in cloud computing and security, cyber security, and that all linked to building and developing new business models. Mm. And uh, after a while working with the government and the intelligence community with cloud computing, I actually launched my own company as a consultant Mm. for digital transformation um, and cloud and and security. Okay. And that is GC Global Net? That's GC Global Net. Okay. Yeah. So it's like you know exactly where I'm going here. You're foreshadowing my questions. <laughs> um, all right, so tell us about, you've kind of already started to foreshadow it, but tell us about what GC Global Net does mm-hmm. and then where you spend your time as, as founder and CEO. So um, as I said, GC Global Net is really focused on helping organizations uh, leverage advanced technologies to uh, invent, create, and deploy mm. new transformative business models and that's pretty challenging right because it, um it's fun it's <laughs> <laughs> i'm thinking of the non-technologists <laughs> like me that can be intimidated with these these um the latest and greatest and, and impactful technologies that can be challenging yeah. of how to apply and apply in the right meaningful way absolutely and it scares a lot of people technology scares people so one of sort of my niche is that I can explain advanced technologies in a way that fits a business need mm-hmm. and a business goal. So I don't talk about the bits and bytes or mm-hmm. you know the, the technology itself because in reality, it's immaterial. Nobody mm-hmm. cares about the technology. What they care about is these are my business goals. How can I get to my business goals? So... They tell me their goals, I go into a closet, I figure stuff out, you know, <laughs> and then I come out and say, oh, this is a there direction, you know, and I try to stay away from the, the technology itself. So mm. I, I consult with a lot of uh, global companies. But the other part about that is I act as a voice piece for a lot of companies over social media. Mm. Um, to talk about the technologies and how they can be leveraged to support and create new business models. Mm. And, and so, so back in just a minute, what I heard there, which I think is really uh, intriguing, is mm-hmm. that it's not about 
latching on to the latest and greatest technology as it rolls off the innovation line. Mm -hmm. It's about hearing the business goals and then going into your closet or or kind of behind the green curtain and (laughs) figure out which technologies are going to be beneficial in a very meaningful way to accomplish those business goals. Absolutely. And sometimes it's new technology. Sometimes it's old school. Mm. I mean, we're in a paperless society, right? Don't you use a pen Uh and a pencil? Uh Yeah. Because it's the right tool for the job. The same thing with technology and new Mm. business models. It's not always putting the brightest and shiniest object out there. Right. Sometimes it's linking old school with ah, new okay. school. I got you. I thought I was in trouble by using my hard copy. No, you know, what, what, what's, what's interesting is we were being asked this the other day. Um, uh, we had one of the thought leaders here was asking mm-hmm. us about what we were doing to help. Um, there was a 17-point United Nations sustainability Sustainability, platform, absolutely, right? yeah. And she was asking how kind of how we were doing our part. Well, I am a hard copy, a devout, <laughs> uh, 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 chronic person that has to have it but we have by and large gone paperless with all of our run of shows which can be pretty big documents as we yeah. prepare for different programs so it's all we use a lot of electronic notes and uh we marry that with the thought that in our landfills still the number one pl- and in terms of plurality of mm-hmm. waste in our municipal landfills is office paper it's paper yeah, yeah it's paper so we're, we're trying but uh but to your point you both. yeah the, the point you're making it doesn't have to be the latest and greatest uh, technology. A lot of times, the stuff that came out a few years back, or maybe even a few further years back, are the most apropos, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So what I am really looking forward to hearing about, and I think one of the things you and I first chatted about uh, online when, uh, via LinkedIn uh-huh. uh, when we came across each other, is this Source Connect project that, oh, that yeah. you're collaborating with, with Demska on. Tell us more about that. So that is really exciting um, because it, it really focuses on the digital transformation of the supply chain. Um, I mean, supply chains have been around since before the Stone Ages, mm. right? There's always a buyer and a seller. Right. Um, and you always need to look at the products that are being sold. You need to have trust mm. with your um, supplier. You have requirements that you have to meet in, in your business. And as the years have moved forward, companies need to buy more and more products. They want to do things like meet sustainability goals. Mm. They want to meet diverse supplier goals. And it becomes harder and harder to gather that information. We get awash with information. Amen. And by and in order to for these large companies to procure products, they have to do a lot of research to find out is this a trustworthy mm-hmm. company? Mm-hmm. Is this really a diverse company or are they lying? Sure. Um, so Demska is really, um, their mission is to help diverse companies become strategic partners with by large commercial global firms. Mm. And What's really important is that the smaller company, sometimes a small company could be $5 million, $10 million sure. when you compare it All to... All that perspective, right? Yeah. When you compare <laughs> it to a $20 billion global behemoth, right? Or a $100 billion right. global behemoth. So these companies may be providing unique products or unique services, but they need to be able to grow with these large companies as the market grows. Mm. So the Demska offers what's called a corporate mentoring program where the larger companies invite their strategic suppliers Mm -hmm. to learn how to be a better member of the supply chain, Um, putting in metrics, reevaluating your own processes, Mm -hmm. determining which supply chain you are a part of because these companies have thousands of supply chains right and you can't spread yourself across you know all these different supply chains you need to focus on Mm. what your core capability is can't focus on everything can't focus on everything so demska helps these companies identify their core improve their processes Mm -hmm. and become better strategic suppliers to these large companies now 
The model mm-hmm. at Demsco with the CMP is that the large companies will invite. So the CMP, is that part of the, the corporate mentoring program, okay. gotcha. which is part of Demsco. Gotcha. This is this is <laughs> this is their secret sauce. Gotcha. Okay. And this is my, so I'm a rookie. This is my first event, uh-huh. and I love my acronym, and we're <laughs> absorbing as many as possible. But the CMP, the Corporate Mentoring Program, which is kind of the heart and soul of Demska. Of Demska, yes. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, okay. Right. So, but as I said before, the larger companies will invite their suppliers to become part of the Corporate Mentoring Program, or mm-hmm. the, the CMP. But what about the companies that are not providing supplies or services to a large company, but they want to? Right. These companies may be just doing transactions mm-hmm. or commercial transactions, but they want to sort of go up the ladder, be, become more important in the ecosystem. Well, that's the purpose behind Source Connect. Mm. It provides a marketplace for these companies that are in the transactional stage or the commercial stage of their growth. It helps them get visibility in their marketplace, in their industry. It gives them the ability to prove their value Mm -hmm. through delivery in supply chains. It's recorded. You get data about the ability of this company to deliver to their customers. So larger companies helps with the due diligence. And something that was uh, announced today is IBM Trust Your Supplier is establishing a relationship with Demska where Demska will become a verifier of diverse suppliers. So it's big news. Absolutely. So part of the supply chain is trust. Mm -hmm. So this enables the procurement officials and sourcing executives to get the information that's needed to build trust across the supply chain. It will shorten the sales cycle, shorten the procurement cycle. And since this data about the supplier Mm -hmm. is digital, it can go directly into speed everything up. Speed everything up. Yeah. Go directly into the back end systems like you know Ariba and SAP. Right. Um, so Source Connect helps these companies that are in a transaction phase. It can serve as a on ramp to the CMP, mm-hmm. the um, corporate mentoring program, mm-hmm. and help these companies grow better, faster. Love it, and. You know, what can you do without trust in the modern-day supply chain? Absolutely. It's very little. It seems like – the other thing it seems like to me that this is going to help amongst some of the things you mentioned in terms of impact and, and, and bottom line results is, you know, in supply chain, mm-hmm. problem-solving while everybody is – you know, while the needle is moving towards more proactiveness and proactivity, if we're going to make up some words here, <laughs> that's a great thing, right? Uh, we're doing that with predictive analytics. We're doing that yes. with a, a variety of different things, modeling and other things. It's all about data, Yes, right? yes. So – Networks like uh, Trust Your Supplier provides data that you can make smart decisions on. And Source Connect consumes that data, matches it with the appropriate um, supplier, and provides an online B2B environment. Now, you know, everyone is used to, like going to an online website right. and buying something from sure. like Etsy or Amazon, yeah, right? The e-commerce era. E-commerce, we're living in. Yeah. right? But believe it or not, businesses aren't buying from businesses on Etsy. <laughs> okay, why? Because it's a completely different model. On an e-commerce site, the seller has all the power. They say these are the products I'm selling. Mm-hmm. This is the price. This is the type of payment I take, and you take it or leave it. Right. The seller has all the power. Mm-hmm. In B2B, the buyer has the power, right? The buyer says, okay, these are the products I want. Mm-hmm. This is how I want to pay. It can be a purchase order. Maybe I need to negotiate a contract. 
Um, maybe your product isn't exactly what I want, mm. but I want to modify it. Mm. So the buyer dictates those terms. Right. Everything is a negotiation. That's why we haven't seen e-commerce right. in B2B. And as a uh, one of our favorite co-hosts here at Supply Chain Now likes to say, <laughs> you don't get what you deserve, you get what you negotiate, exactly. right? Exactly. <laughs> so Source Connect is taking the e-commerce technology, digital technology, to bring it into the B2B world. Okay, love it. Uh, it's, it seems like it, it's it has the potential when is it is it live now it's actually live now okay on um source connect with an e.com okay <laughs> source connect uh s-o-u-r-c-e yeah. connect.com no connect c-o-n-n-e-c-t-e e e on the end gotcha yes. okay dot dot com. Com. we'll include a link to that in the show notes this Thank episode you. make it really easy for folks um who is i think i know the answer to this question i want to ask it to okay. get it from uh, uh, the gospel truth here, who is eligible to participate? So the truth is um, anyone is eligible okay. if they want to become part of this ecosystem. Okay. Um, and uh, I primarily it's the Demska ecosystem. Uh, we are focusing on helping diverse um, uh, OEM companies, companies that actually have things to sell, mm. Um, and they want to be better prepared and to grow with these large multinational companies. So by coming and becoming part of the ecosystem, you get more visibility, Mm. more opportunities. Love it. Okay. Source Connect with an E on the end, dot com. I'll include the show notes. But what an exciting initiative. You know, as a first-time Demska conference Mm -hmm. attendee and participant, you know, and we saw it in every interview. Folks love the the camaraderie, the kindred spirits, the the, the special fellowship that's here, especially with a, um, you know, and it seems like an intentionally smaller conference where yeah. I think we had 150 folks. You could get access, you could get conversations, and you could even get some action. Absolutely. Know? One thing that's um, uh, really unique about Demska in this conference is that. People get to know each other. Right. You get to build a relationship. You get to trust each other. And from being together for two to three days, it leads into weeks, months, mm. and years of collaboration yeah. and business. Yeah, relationships. Yeah, yes. trusting relationships. Okay. So let's move right along. Let's kind of go go a little more broad here. Okay. Um, so when you, th- when you look at the global... In the end, supply chain universe, uh-huh. right? Right, right. So much is going on. Uh, change by the minute. It seems like change is only uh, in many good ways and some challenging ways. It's only speeding up. What what one or two trends or developments or innovation, you, you name it, what yeah. in that whole realm are you tracking more than others? Well, we've talked a lot about information mm-hmm. and the need to build trust. Believe it or not, People may give you false information. Oh, gosh. (laughs) (laughs) That happens. It happens, right? (laughs) Um, And if you're trying to buy something, you're risking your business or a new product line on on a supplier, you need that information that you're using to be verified, to be correct, Mm. and it can't be changed. So the key technology to support the... Uh, immutability or the, of information and data is blockchain. Mm. And blockchain is revolutionizing supply chain mm. because of its ability to collect, digitally sign, and provide information in an immutable mm. fashion. Mm. Um, so our marketplace, the Source Connect marketplace, is a blockchain-enabled mm. platform for doing transactions. We are working with IBM TYS, or Trust Your Supplier, Mm -hmm. which is a blockchain-enabled source of information about both buyers and suppliers. Mm -hmm. So when a procurement official comes to Source Connect, they have protected immutable information about the product and the supplier that they can trust. Mm. It's also digitally connected to multiple procurement 
digital mm-hmm. procurement systems. Mm-hmm. So it reduces the onboarding because the information is trustworthy. So blockchain is enabling that trust mm-hmm. across supply chain. I love you know we've had uh, blockchain has certainly been a top five theme in all these interviews we've conducted here. Mm-hmm. But uh, this has been probably one of the first conferences I've attended, you know, and we've done we've done ten events over the last year, where the prevailing opinion or prevailing position is not if blockchain is going to change the world or if blockchain is going to have the impact. <laughs> it's it's here. It's happening and today, it, right? Yeah, now. and it's having a big impact already in a very real and practical way, and and and. Um, that's been an interesting learning and, and key takeaway. So it's really cool to hear how um, uh, Resource Connect mm-hmm. is, you said, blockchain ready. Blockchain ready. Love we do it. smart contracts, and we're ready to, to help our members mm-hmm. grow and expand across the ever-expanding marketplace. Okay. So uh, I want to ask you one more question before we, we make sure our listeners can know where to uh, connect with your company and, and these initiatives and you. Um, as you think about all of the uh, uh, other conversations that were, were that were part of uh, the Dimska conference here, other than the Source Connect mm-hmm. big announcement with with Big Blue or IBM, <laughs> yeah, um, what's going to be as you and, and where you, where do you live? I live just out of Washington D.C. Okay, yeah. so as you're flying back tonight with Lisa uh, <laughs> to D.C., what's going to be one of the key takeaways that's going to be between your ears for a little while? You know. Um, I believe business, and it's always been the case, business is about relationships, okay? And relationships take effort. Not everything goes your way the first time. Don't give up. It takes tenacity, Mm. it takes focus, and it takes purpose. Mm. And what I've seen and heard, not just here, but throughout my entire career, is that the successful business people focus on relationships Mm. and they have tenacity and purpose. So it's just a reinforcement. Sure, you've seen it here. I've seen it here. Through conversations and and interactions, you name it. absolutely. Well, something tells me, uh, Kevin L. Jackson, that you are full (laughs) of – uh, tenacity, focus, and purpose. I try. I that's, try. That's, that's my <laughs> first impression here. Um, I hate to kind of uh, uh, pull thing, you know, it kind of wind down the interview because okay. uh, there's so many different you places we could. Thread you want to pull? Yeah, we could, we could <laughs> dive deep. But um, how can I want to make sure our listeners can, can connect with uh, your company and this <laughs> initiative and then you. So okay. starting with GC Global Net. Yes. How so can folks learn more? Again, we are on gcglobalnet.com. Um, that's that's pretty straightforward, and uh, I'm on across multiple social media channels. But I guess the easiest would be LinkedIn, mm-hmm. Kevin L. Jackson on LinkedIn or Twitter, okay. Kevin underscore Jackson. Okay, on Twitter. Okay, and how can uh, what's the easiest way with Source Connect? I, I guess Source Connect with an E dot com. Source Connect with an E. We the Source Connect on LinkedIn. Okay, okay, <laughs> and what about um, if you know, we've been really wanting folks to explore and, and learn more about Demska at dmsca.us. Is there yes. any... any uh, That's the best way to okay. learn about Demska. That's the uh, um, Diverse Manufacturing uh, Supply Alliance. Love it. Yep. Okay. So much going on. Yes. But we'll to is. bring you back for a series of, of episodes. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> All I right. I enjoyed it. I did too. Kevin L. Jackson, founder and CEO, GC Global Net, also a big player in the Source Connect uh, initiative, along with the, the fine folks IBM and Demska. So learn more. Check out the URLs we mentioned. It'll be in the show notes. And uh, looking forward to reconnecting. Kevin, thanks so thank much. Thank you very much. All right, so to our listeners, two quick announcements before we wrap up here. Uh, first off, I uh, hope you've enjoyed our programming and coverage of the Demska Conference. Stay tuned for more as we as we release it over the next few weeks. All the the probably about twelve different interviews from the Morgan State University delegation that got everybody's attention uh, to a variety of thought leaders like Kevin here. Really enjoyed our time. Hopefully, you've enjoyed it as much. You can learn more about the organization again at dmsca.us. And then secondly. You know, check out what we've got coming up at Supply Chain Now. 
Uh, we've got uh, in-person and digital events with, with global partners from uh, EFT Reuters events to the Automotive Industry Action Group, Modex, Resilience 360, and much, much more. Um, and if you can't find what you're looking for on our website, you can also always hit up our CMO at Amanda at SupplyChainRadio.com. Once more, thanks again to Kevin L. Jackson with GC Global Net. My pleasure. Uh, big thanks to our sponsor, Verusen, V-E-R-U-S-E-N dot com, who is uh, battling uh, the forces of good for data harmonization <laughs> throughout the world with a big emphasis on materials, Verusen dot com. And on behalf of our entire team here, Scott Luton, wishing you a wonderful week ahead, and we will see you next time on Supply Chain Now. Thanks, everybody.